Hello, good, every, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Edwin van der Leyden. I, uh, I work for uh, Edify Technologies. The presentation uh, today was originally held by uh, Stuart Kenny. He was held up, so I'm stepping in for his presentation today. Um, what we want to show today here is a, a combination of using NDT techniques with robotics for tank inspection. So there will be a bit of information on traditional methods, uh, also on the line of um, uh, NDT techniques that are currently used in the, in the field of uh, tank inspection, and also looking at a, a, a case study specifically for uh, using robotics in combination with, uh, with NDT. Um, so, Edify Technologies, I don't know if you know us, we're uh, a, a, a relatively large company. We're um, um, based globally, we have a global footprint. We have um, uh, seven centers of excellence around the world. This is where we actually perform R&D and do development of our new equipment, including robotics. Uh, and then we have another uh, six uh, service centers from where we conduct sales uh, and support our products uh, uh, being developed. Uh, our head office is in, in Quebec, uh, and we're about 650 employees for this business unit alone. We're poor, uh, part of a, a bigger outfit, uh, which is uh, NDFI NDT. Uh, in total, we have 1,500 people working globally in a, a variety of different companies, all focused around maintenance for uh, all sorts of assets, not only tanks, but also pipelines, vessels, refineries, offshore platforms, and uh, wind parks. Uh, we also uh, have uh, NDT Global, specifically for, for picking of pipelines. Um, we have uh, TSC, where we build um, um, inspection technologies for subsea deployment, uh, specifically for crack detection with ACFM. Uh, we have a company called Dynamic Risk, uh, who is basically performing fitness for service calculations on tanks, uh, vessels, and pipelines. Uh, and then we have Sensive, which is a company developing um, monitoring, uh, basically static, static and dynamic monitoring for bridges and anything um, uh, in the field that is, requires monitoring, actually. Um, we're involved in uh, many different sorts of NDT techniques. Um, one of the things you'll find missing here is radiography, where we don't have a, a, um, a development in radiography. Uh, but we do all sorts of other uh, techniques like eddy currents, MFL, UT, uh, guided waves, and of course, robotics. And especially the combination between the two is something that uh, can be quite interesting also for um, for tank inspection. Uh, now we all know that, that tanks require periodic inspections, right? Um, and many of uh, the parts of a tank require inspection. It doesn't matter if it's a roof, it's a shell, or pipelines, or, or pumps. Um, but those inspections can be quite elaborative and expensive, right? Um, so what we really want to do is when we develop our products is to aim at being efficient, as efficient as possible. And I, th and I think especially the combination of NDT and robotics can really help drive efficiency in the, in the field. And that's where the innovation comes in, right? We're a very innovative company, always looking for the next thing. So what we want to show you with this presentation is how the deployment of robotics in combination with NDT can basically help uh, minimize downtime of a tank, right? And this for the tank owner is quite a big thing because obviously a tank is a profit center and you want to keep the cost for inspection and downtime as minimal as possible. Um, in order to gain uh, efficiency, you basically have to look at each step in the inspection process. So um, you have to start up doing the pre-planning, the preparation, the inspection itself, and the eventual reporting of which you have to determine whether a tank is still fit for service. Um, if you look at the efficiency gains that can be made, they're not only in the inspection itself, by optimizing the inspection technique, by making it faster, but also looking at steps before that process, right? Uh, cleaning, and in, in this case, uh, specifically scaffold building. Um, 
this is voice of customer. So uh, obviously here in, in Rotterdam, uh, like companies like Vopac, uh, big, 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 uh, big customers. Uh, what they say is, yeah, we, you know, looking at downtime and minimizing that time downtime is really a big thing for us because that is basically where we make uh, most of the of the um, uh, the gain, and you know, we we optimize our revenues. Then, if you look at a tank, like I said, there's many portions of a tank that need to be inspected or can be inspected. It's not always the same, of course, but. Um, uh, it, it ranges from pipes around the tank, but also tank roofs, tank shells, tank bottoms. Um, and basically what you see is, or what we have in our portfolio is a technology that allow you to inspect each portion of that tank with a different technology. So for the floor, for instance, we've recently developed uh, the new floor map X. We have it on the stand, a very nice piece of equipment. This will help you to very efficiently inspect the tank floor. This presentation is more focused around robotics uh, and then used for tank shells and tank roofs. If you look at the uh, tank roofs and shells, then mainly what you see is that UT and MFL is used in combination with uh, an Anukton robot uh, to be as efficient as possible. Also, if you look at welding around the tank, there's technology like ACFM or um, eddy currents that can be used for crack detection. Uh, we, in the past, we used to use um, uh, vacuum boxes, but we now see that uh, a combination with uh, eddy current array, for instance, is much more efficient, much quicker than you would get with a, with a normal uh, vacuum box technique. Um, also quite interesting is the, um, uh, the, the, the MFL pipe scanner. It's the same technology as a floor scanner, but then be able to use it for pipes, so you can quickly scan pipes for corrosion, um, find those um, uh, defects that are there and then uh, use a technology like UT to make an assessment on how severe that corrosion is. Finally, we also have a new product uh, which is a, a guided waves um, and guided waves now with a new collar, a uh, magneto restrictive collar will allow you to do short range but high resolution scans of larger sections of pipe. So for this, let's focus on the, uh, the shell and roof inspection. Um, we all know that that tank uh, o operates in a quite harsh condition, right? Um, damage occurs from uh, as well as the product inside, as well as the uh, environmental uh, issues that are, are around tent. Can be rain, can be wind. Uh, this will all have be a potential damage to a, to a tank. Uh, if a roof or a tank shell fails, the consequence is quite high. So obviously you want to avoid this. Hence, taking all this into consideration, what you need is something which is fast, uh, robust, and reliable, right? And, and we have those techniques, and we're now combining them with uh, robotics to create very efficient tank inspections. Um, like I said, the degradation process is always different, can be a variety of things. And specifically, I think this, uh, this picture is quite interesting. If you focus on the, uh, if you focus on the shell, um, what you normally see traditionally is that um, uh, uh, spot points, spot measurements are taken to determine uh, the, the quality of a tank shell. But you can imagine that if you're in the lower portion of that tank shell, you think, okay, there's nothing wrong with this, uh, with this tank shell. While above there, you can see that there's quite severe pitting. So what you need here is a, a technique which has a larger coverage. Um, like I said, traditionally what you would do is you would build scaffolding around the tank. There were people climb up the scaffold and then point by point they would take measurements on certain uh, positions on a plate. Um, you're very limited in coverage. You only have a few spot checks. Maybe if you're lucky you will find a defect which is deep enough. It's very low speed um, and it's very time consuming. Not only the inspection itself but also building the, scaff the scaffolding. And what you get is very limited data. And, uh, and let's not forget about the, the HSE risk that you have people climbing on, uh, on scaffolds. The modern technology uh, that, we, that we currently promote is um, uh, something which is more based on crawlers and robots. 
uh, these will do the work for you. It will prevent you from, from building scaffolding, um, but it will also allow you to scan much more uh, surface area of a tank shell and a tank roof, uh, because this is a, a crawler. Uh, it will automatically sweep over the surface of a tank and create what we call a C-scan. You'll get a picture of uh, the quality of the tank shell and, and you'll be able to find small defects, even the smallest defects. The nice thing is remote, remotely operated, so there'll be somebody on the floor in a safe condition controlling the robot. Um, and the operation is quite fast. These things can travel at quite high speeds. Uh, the data that you get is uh, very comprehensive. Uh, it will contain all sorts of data. Um, information itself on the wall thickness, but also maybe um, uh, loss on amplitude. There's different ways that you can have a look at this data. And also there's no HSE risk. You don't have to send people up scaffolds in dangerous situations. Um, so this is a, a, an example of a few robots. Like I said, we have different platforms of uh, robotic and robotic crawlers. Each have their own purpose. So we have robots that can go into pipes. We can have robots that can climb up to shells. Uh, we, can have, we have robots that can make sweeps for measurements, but we also have robots that can actually do cleaning and repair remotely. Um, in this example, we're combining uh, robotics with phased array, and I don't know how many of you know uh, what phased array is, or UT. Um, so traditionally, like I said, we would use spot checks. It's a single probe where you take one spot, one thickness measurement. In this case, we're using phase array. It's a larger probe, has much more elements, and we basically get a sweep, a sweep area, depending, can be, can be about 60 millimeters. But again, this head, we're moving this head over our surface, so we get a lot of inspection data, a lot of surface coverage in a relatively short period of time. Also, this data is very repeatable. Right? Because if we make this measurement, it's quite uh, uh, reliable data that if we do an inspection once, we can basically repeat the inspection and get exactly the same results. And why this is important is specifically if you want to take this data and use it for a digital twin or for uh, an RBI or an IDMS system, uh, an, index, uh, an uh, inspection database management system or... Um, a risk-based inspection system. Therefore, you need reliable, repeatable data. That's why phased array is very suitable for this. Um, also, phased array can be deployed on a lot of different components, from pipes to plates, uh, different temperature ranges, uh, up to 80 degrees normally, but we also have systems that can go up to 200 degrees Celsius. Um, wall thicknesses, it can easily measure anywhere between two, uh, two, uh, two millimeters to 200 millimeters. So even if you have a thick vessel, uh, of course, this is not for, for tanks, but uh, if you look in the nu nuclear industry, for instance, we have vessels that we need to inspect which are easily this, this thickness. Um, also, what is quite important is that it can measure true coating. You don't need to remove coating from the tank to be able to do this inspection. And what we use with our system is an immersion method. You can see it on the, um, uh, on the picture on the left here with the blue. Um, the immersion method basically is a, a form of transport of the ultrasound coming from the probe into the material. Uh, air will stop uh, an ultrasonic signal, therefore we need some sort of a couplant. Normally we use some sort of gel, but obviously uh, we can't apply gel. And because water can be easily pumped, we use water as a couplant uh, for um, uh, getting the ultrasonic signals and eventually the result, as you can see it on the screen here. Um, you can see a, a stiffener plate and a corrosion area. This is basically um, a, a scan of a, a, a bottom of a, of a tank, of a, a vessel. Uh, so very clearly you get an image of the defect being present in the, uh, in the asset and, ex and, and measure the extent. Right? Um, yeah. Also quite nice about phase array, in this combination with a robot, it is quite fast. So the robotic systems are not really new. Um, the first robotic crawlers that we developed came into the market in 2009. Uh, but these were single probe elements. Uh, 
uh, a single probe making a measurement, but now combining it with phased array is actually 10 times faster. And this is important because you want to get as much coverage in uh, uh, as less time possible when you talk about tank shells and tank roof, because obviously it's a, it's a, a large surface area. Also, the nice thing about phased array is the high probability of detection. Uh, with these probes, we currently have a resolution of a millimeter. So we make a, a, a millimeter by a millimeter measurement, making sure that we actually find even the smallest defects, and that's what we call POD. POD stands for probability of detection. Um, phased array also allows you to do uh, defect correct, uh, characterization. Uh, so if you have a de uh, defect in a C scan, with, with the combining uh, uh, A scan results, you can basically make a characterization of the defect that you're looking at. This is probably more important when you do inspections of a vessel, when you talk about uh, HIC, uh, hydrogen induced corrosion, or uh, HTHA. Um, this is what I talked about earlier. So if, if you do traditional scanning with a single probe, you have to make a trade-off, right? If you want to go fast, you have to choose a higher resolution, but your POD will go down. We don't have to make this decision with phase array because we always get the one by one millimeter resolution. And you can see the difference here on the left side. So the one by one millimeter resolution give me a very defined image of, uh, of my defects in my, uh, on my uh, object. Uh, and by the five by five resolution, which of course is, is a lot faster, we have a risk of actually missing defects um, and, and not as nice picture. So in the end, you'll, you'll get a, uh, an image like this. Bear with me for a minute, because this probably is a bit, you know, uh, a, bit, a bit stiff, but in the end, the, the whole idea is that you combine this kind of technology, which is not new. Uh, phase array is a, is, a tr is a technique that has been used for quite a long time, but we're now combining it with robotics, which makes it, like, really interesting. Um, so when you do collection, data collection with phased array, you get a lot of data, uh, but a lot of data also give you uh, the opportunity to manipulate that data, either in 3D, uh, but also because it's digital, you'll be able to post-process this data. You can now take data from an object and do a reanalysis of a fur or a further analysis when you're back in your office. So you don't really need to do this in the field. Uh, 3D imaging is, is uh, one of the options as well because um, you're basically allowing yourself to view at the object from any different angle. And this is, of course, something that we developed in the, in the software for, uh, for tank inspection. Uh, this is an example of, uh, of, a scanner in, of a scanner in action. As you can see, it, it moves forward. It uses the water as a, as a couplant. And while it moves, it basically scans the surface on a one by one millimeter resolution for uh, any corrosion spot or even small pits. The picture that you saw previously with the stiffener plates is actually a, a live image from, uh, from this particular inspection. So this will allow you to very closely, very precisely with high resolution inspect data on, uh, on surfaces. Um, also the option here that you have is, is the post analysis. As we said before, you can basically go back into a data set and run through that data set again and have a look at the data, and you can see basically how the uh, how the the the, the back wall surface is, is developing. In this case, this was a, this is an image for a, a roof inspection, a tank roof inspection. Um, so, like I said, we have a, we have done a, a case study, uh, a collaboration with a company, where basically what we've done is we uh, we connected uh, one of our robots to the internet, and one person that was. Uh, 1,800 kilometers away could actually log into the system and control the system remotely. A lot of text, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain what happened was that there was a, uh, uh, this was COVID period, by the way, because sometimes a, a, a tragedy creates uh, innovations. Um, um, there were people sent out to, uh, to do an inspection in the field and they came across some issues. Uh, issues with setting up the equipment and be being able to perform a good uh, inspection. Then one of the guys, one of the managers, one of the level threes, basically from his home, and he was in confinement um, in, in Australia somewhere, 
went on his laptop on the internet, connected remotely to the robotic system, and done the setup, and also was able to maneuver uh, the, the, the system and get a good scan on the, uh, on the tank in this case. I don't know. Is uh, ah. okay? So this is just a, a summary of uh, um, what went on. Um, so the guy couldn't travel. Um, this inspection had to be carried out. There was no, you know, there was no room for deferment. They couldn't delay the inspection. It had to be done now. There was risk of the asset going offline. Um, in this case, it was a HTSA uh, inspection. Um, and then the guy remotely logged in, done all the setup, and also trained the person on site using the robotics to actually do the inspection. Uh, and all that from 1,800 kilometers away. So that is a, a quite nice uh, thing. Um, but if you look at this closely, because like I said, sometimes a tragedy creates innovations. And in this case, we started looking at robotics in a, in a different way. And you can see that robotics itself combined with an inspection can bring a lot, right? You can train people remotely, you can coach people remotely, uh, but also you can make uh, offline decisions online while you're really online. Huh? So one people could be, one guy could be in the field, not sure of what's going on. You can call somebody in another office, say, hey, you know, please have a look at this screen, have a look at this defect, have a look at this setup, and what do you think? Do you agree with my decision that this is a severe uh, indication or not? Um, so it will actually help you um, um, perform better in the end. Um, what's also interesting, if you combine this kind of technology with robotics, because you'll be able to do it faster, you'll be able to scan assets 100%, so you can basically do a scan of a, a tank shell 100%, and because you collect so much data, this will help you if you are currently building a digital twin or want to do finite analysis. I want to have a look at, okay, where on my tank is my weak point and how does this look combined with the inspection data. This could be the UT data that you overlay on the data that you already have in your, in your digital twin, make your strength calculations, and it might turn out that you have a weak point specifically there. Something that you can avoid in, you know, when new tanks are built, you can basically address that point. Um, the data that's collected is very versatile. It's all digital, so it's, it's either XML or Excel. You can easily you know, share that with, uh, with other users. Um, and one of the nice things is if you collect a lot of data, then you'll be able to do historic comparisons, right? So if we do an inspection previously, then okay, we, de we, 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 we found a defect, but we don't know, was that defect there already 10 years ago? Has it grown in the last year? Do we need to do something about it now? Or, or is it not really that important? It's not growing that fast. So what we can do with this new trend of digital data is compare that with previous data. And because we, we're, we're more and more looking into um, uh, the way we encode the data on the tank, using digital twinning, we'll be able to compare historic results. Um, one of the nice things is that we're, what we're currently working on is, is absolute positioning. If you look at relative positioning, we're creating a scan a meter by a meter, somewhere on a tank shell. But we have to have a datum point, because where was that point originally taken? If we want to do historic comparison, we need to have that exact same datum point, which is quite difficult when you talk about uh, relative positioning. So what we're now currently looking at is absolute positioning. So we take one point on the tank, use that as an absolute point, and every inspection area from there is related to that single point. Uh, you can see a nice example here of um, a, a crawler with mechanic, mechanic wheels and 3D uh, or 2D actually um, uh, encoders. So we always know where this um, uh, crawler is on the tank and can always know uh, where, we, um, where we need to position the data. So we don't have issues with overlap anymore or, or measurement errors from that datum point. Um, and much better suitable for digital analysis and, and twinning. Technologies, there's a few technologies currently being able to do that. Uh, we can work with radio waves and do triangulations. Uh, we can use ultrasonic plate waves as well, where we use a uh, uh, measurement of uh, ultrasonic waves in the material itself, or use laser. 
Um, as a conclusion, um, yeah, phased array itself as an inspection is really suitable for tank and shell roofs and it saves a lot of time in combination with a robot while getting 100% data and higher resolution. Um, it has the potential, together with, with robots, to create a new inspection landscape, right? We're, 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 we're changing the way we do, we're doing inspection. Um, like I said, the current developments, current developments are focused around encoding, positioning, uh, and that will create even more um, uh, doubt de reliable data output and efficiency than we already see now. Um, we have improved coverage, right, which is a, a big plus. We have better probability of detection, so we're inspecting more, we're finding smaller defects, and do it quicker, um, which uh, enables the overall efficiency gain. Also, because we're collecting data continuously while we do the inspection, um, uh, the reporting has become much more easy. We're basically building re the report as we go, um, and then robotic systems, like I said, it's, it's the platform. Robotic itself is just a, a, a way of getting the NDT technology out there where, where, where we want to do the inspections. Um, and it, and they, they are becoming more easy to control and more and more easy to deploy. Overall, if you look at the uh, comparison between an old inspection and a new inspection, there's a, a number of improvement gains that you'll see. Um, the, the biggest improvement gain probably as a takeaway from this slide is that we don't have to build scaffolding anymore and do less cleaning. Overall, uh, like I said, uh, we have to look at each aspect of an inspection while we do uh, tank shell and tank roof inspections. It will aid to the, to the efficiency and the end result is that we have a time reduction and in the end um, uh, uh, a limitation of downtime and that's uh, uh, in fact what, uh, what the asset owners really want. Future, um, obviously we're working on a, a lot of new stuff, uh, specifically when you talk about um, uh, robotics in combination with NDT. Um, we're more and more focusing on NII, uh, non-intrusive inspections and obviously all the techniques that I've showed you here today are uh, non-intrusive, that means that the, the tank can still remain operational to do the inspection. Um, and we're looking at autonomous robots. Uh, where I said the absolute positioning is, is, is important, where we just place a robot on a tank shell or on a tank roof, we define the layout, we define the areas that we want to inspect, and we just press start, and the robot autonomously is doing the inspection itself. Of course, this comes with uh, further development in the field of AI, artificial intelligence, where in the end the robot itself needs to make some sort of decision. Uh, maybe there's, uh, there's an object in the way, there are stairs or whatever it needs to uh, decide. Then there's a little, little robot coming looking around the corner and I think that's where we're going in the future. So I think there's exciting things ahead, specifically for this portion. Nothing that I really showed you here is new. Robots are not new, NDT is not new, face array is not new, but bringing them all together is something which is new. So I hope that uh, that was valuable for you today.